Morning, everyone, Good. and thank you all. Thank you for coming up uh, to the, our first inaugural event, FinTech uh, Bharat FinTech Summit. So, thank you very much. Okay, uh, can we have the presentation up? So, very interesting. Uh, how many of you know about the digital banking unit? How many of you have heard of digital banking unit? Pretty interesting. Okay, few hands coming up. Uh, so, I'll try to solve what it is. Right. So it's actually the last year primarily, yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks uh, guys. So let's just, before I get into the digital, okay, thank you. Managing both the hands uh, is gonna be tricky, okay? So it should not happen, I'm pressing here and then try to speak here, okay, just ignore. Okay, thanks, uh, so uh, it is last year actually when the RBI came with a concept called digital banking unit. But before I get into the digital banking unit, what the digital banking unit and how does it gonna help you or can you, you can lead that entire the digital transformation fully okay i think one thing we need to appreciate when the west built that entire the physical infrastructure right and that took them ahead right be it on the us on european market if you look at it i think india built that one of the best digital infrastructure i think we all appreciate that right uh, and it's not only appreciated uh, within India but across the globe that kind of the digital infrastructure we have built it and why is we are I'm just trying to set a context that DBU is an extension of that kind of the digital infrastructure most of the you are aware of it right uh, and as of 30th November like say 1.3 billion uh, Aadhaar card has already been issued. Uh, just look at the number, 14 billion EKYCs. Majority of the EKYCs happening in the banking industry, right? Billions of e-signs has been happened, right? Uh, so India stack has completely set it the entire the transformation of the digital, right? Look at the Dizzy Locker. So I'm not going to explain into the each of the component, uh, but so Dizzy Locker, I think that's still is catching up. I think uh, once this goes to the full potential, just imagine that every documentation is there and it can be used by anybody into the whole of the value chain. UPI, I think we all been in awe of the UPI, the way it's exploded in the world that in number of the transactions, right, the kind of the volume and it shows the kind of the infrastructure that you have at the back end with the banks, NPCI and everybody to take care of that kind of volumes like 12.9 lakh uh, uh, crore of value of the transaction, 803 crore transactions, right? And other infrastructure which has also been getting built like COVID, we have seen that kind of the infrastructure when it was available that you can go and see the certificate. I think many of you would have been uh, doing the food order on the Zomato and the Swiggy, you can see that driver, uh, rider traveling and then you can click on that and you can see their COVID certificate, right? Just imagine the kind of the infrastructure it was there, right? And then Diksha primarily in the literacy, Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, again, is a massive measure, the data-oriented kind of the infrastructure that can be set up in the digital. So this is just a context to set that, what is that digital infrastructure the country has built, which is influencing finance, the banking, the fintech industry, as well as the rest of the other things. And look at that, how the banking transformation has happened over a period of uh, times, right? Uh, so we know that early days when the banks had set it up the core banking, Internet banking was the first digital interface for the people to come and start doing the transaction online, right? And then ATMs came, the pause came. Slowly it get transition to the mobile banking. I think uh, we all need to thanks Mr. Steve Jobs when 2007, iPhone came and they changed the way the world has interacted on the mobility, right? So that's where that entire the mobile application and the banking also has started experiencing the mobile applications, right? And the payment infrastructure start coming up, NEFT, RTGS. IMPS in the 2010 when the IMPS came as a, one of the first real-time payment systems in somewhere in 2010, right? But I think in the last six or seven years that you can see that it's completely taken a wide leap with the eKYC coming, the video KYC, when unfortunate scenario of the COVID when we all get locked down and still that account can be opened uh, using the video KYC, right? And then lots of the mobility apps started coming and somewhere 2016 UPI happened, right? So you can see that kind of the transformation started happening and the open banking also started coming into that time period, right? But now the transformation is taking place where that neo banking or the digital banking unit is coming up, right? So neo banking is the kind of the new is banking interface where that they work with the banking partner to try to build a kind of the much better engaging kind of the infrastructure. And the DBO is with an objective from the RBI to set it up and the government also to 
push that banking services digitally to the tier two to tier six kind of the cities where that still we may not have that kind of the engagement that digitally has happened, right? So that's kind of the transformation has happened. Uh, so now, just trying to demystify DBU, right? Uh, so DBU is a kind of the physical structure that RBI has proposed. Very important that what they try to say that, okay, okay now you don't need to treat the digital banking, unit, digital banking as a kind of the interface engine for the customer to engage digitally, right? But also start treating the digital banking unit as an independent business unit within the bank with its own PNL structure. Understanding that it's trying to say that, okay, how many customer has been acquired, what kind of the money that you are making with the digital banking unit, the way you measure the PNL structure, the way you measure the performance of that particular retail banking or the commercial banking, you should also be able to do for the digital banking. So it's a kind of the physical infrastructure that they suggested where that customer can come and then do the, all the digital transaction on their own. But still there is a physical leg attached to it, right? Well, either it could be the kiosk or it could be the tab where the customer can come, open an account, do the fund transfer and apply for the loan and all kind of the banking services, but primarily digitally. So that's where the objective is there. Uh, primarily, as I said, it can be considered as a banking unit. Try to have an API layer. So uh, primarily, I know most of the, you must be aware of the APIs, right? APIs are nothing but the kind of the mechanism to let the two applications to communicate to each other, right? And API has changed the way of the digital, right? Uh, that's where the, one of the fundamental changes happened. So here the DBO has tried to emphasize that every service delivery should happen through the APIs, okay? And bank must recognize digital banking as a subcategory where that you are managing the PNL, uh, right? And the uh, aim of his behavior is to blend and fit, uh, digital personal elements. You can't see that. I can assume that, uh, yes, because of the seats are there, right? Now, just trying to give a perspective, right? There is a front end where the physical infrastructure has been laid down, but when physical infrastructure is maybe on a kind of the ATM, the way you see the ATMs as an extension to the branch, the DBO is on a much wider extension of the branch where the physical setup has been created. And then you are making that all the services available in the digitally. Yes, it also provision that the uh, assisted journeys can be taken care of because it's targeting tier two to tier six kind of the cities where the people may not be the, too comfortable to handle the things on their own. So it's trying to say that, okay, there is a kind of assistant structure has been created. So look at the front end, it's trying to have interactive tailor machines, interactive bankers, service terminals, everything, video KYC apparatus to make that customer gets any kind of the services, whether he wants to buy in a product, let's say for example, he's trying to apply for a loan, personal loan, or he's trying to apply for any kind of an uh, open and a fixed deposit, anything that he's trying to do that can be done. But it can't happen, that physical infrastructure that you are trying to see, it can't happen unless until you transform the entire the backend. And that's where the, the entire the digital transformation, I will try to link it, right? Uh, DBU is a kind of extension for you to really transform the banking in the backend. Because unless until you transform the banking in the backend, it's not gonna be delivered on the physical infrastructure that is DBO, right? So it's like the core banking systems, which is there currently, the legacy infrastructure maybe now transforming into the next layer of generation, which can make the services available the digitally on the kiosk or the interactive machines that you're talking about. You can't deliver it unless until your backend supports, right? Say for example, the core banking, core banking, if you want to open any fixed deposit, if it goes as a live as a request, it's not going to sort, right? It should be get opened automatically. And that's where most of the core banking, be it on the Finacle or anything else, you'll see that has uh, transformed to that level where that it can support anything that's happened digitally on the any of the interfaces. What payment processing system, I think most of the payment has moved digitally, right? That's what we're seeing. But at the same time, you need to make sure that your entire the backend also supports that kind of the control mechanism because now you are trying to let the customers come and open an account or do the banking digitally. You need to make sure that it's being completely protected to add with the fraud management, anti-money laundry, and risk management and all kind of the solutions can be built into that, right? Just more details uh, about the DBU. Uh, so it gives you perspective that what we are talking about and what it uh, contains. So it says that key, all the kind of the liability as well as asset product is switch support. One of the measures, the shift has happened that it's emphasis on the asset side of it. We know that saving account now can be open digitally, but can somebody apply for the personal loan digitally? Can somebody 
can somebody open an account, buy an insurance? Can somebody can uh, open an uh, uh, DMAT account digitally? So that's where the emphasis. So account opening, current savings deposits, it should provide the digital banking, like mobile banking, internet banking kind of facility, right? And it can support the merchant uh, both. And when you're looking at the liability, it's trying to take care of both the retail as well as the business SME, MSME. Since it's talking about the tier two to tier six kind of the cities, the, one of the major challenge has happened when it comes to the digital interaction. I think SME, MSME has largely been not been tapped. Okay. Uh, Nepa, you have to guide me on, continue to guide me on the time. Five minutes? Okay. That's all. I should not have asked you. Okay. On the asset side, definitely all the loan products, wealth management is talking about, and services. I have spoken about the kiosk, digital onboarding, account opening. I'll just so these are like uh, guidelines are there. This is very important, right? DBO is going to and so already started. As of now, we know that the, uh, most of the banks has already opened 75 banking units. All the states in the country have at least got on a one uh, digital banking unit by the various banks, be it on the uh, SBI or ICCI. So where the banks definitely is, has to deploy that entire the digital strategy, so support the delivery of the banking services through the DBUs. That's very critical, right? Unless until you have the study, you can't do the digital delivery. Upscaling, the partnership with the fintech, that's very critical, right? Because fintechs is definitely helping you to extend the value chain of the digital infrastructure that banks are trying to create. Well, banks is creating that kind of infrastructure, I think fintechs are going to benefit, as well as fintechs are going to contribute to the whole of the process. So opportunity for the partner to banks to run, because it's DBO a guidelines which has come from the RBI, it supports that, okay, banks can outsource to run these DBOs. I just imagine that now the banks can have the partnership with some of the fintechs and everybody, they can run that DBO on behalf of the banks, because they work only on the technology, right? They understand the layer of the technologies, delivery of the banking services digitally. So that's where the fintechs are definitely much superiorly designed to handle the DBO structures. And definitely the increase in the funding, valuation of the data, APIs, emergence of new player. At the same time, when the entire ecosystem of the DBO is increasing, it also provides lots of opportunity for the technology service provider to create solutions. As we in the previous slide, we have seen that it's already talking about the multiple facet of the banking services. TSPs can pick up and then try to simplify lots of the delivery of these financial services, right? So that's the impact that we is gonna see. But now the concept question coming up that is the DBO is gonna be standalone as a part of the banking uh, bank's digital study or it can be a part of the larger digital transformation. And how the DBO can help into the leading the entire the digital transformation I tried to summarize it into, uh, so this is primarily, as I was talking about, uh, part of the uh, retail and commercial. This is again the structure, but I'll just, uh, in the context of the time, I'll try to focus more on the, this slide, which is primarily emphasizing on the completely digital transformation led through the DBO. As I was talking about the DBO, helping the banks to streamline the entire the front end and the back end, right? Now, how does it happen? Then you need to definitely put in the core business stack. Again, you can't see that. Uh, I didn't realize that it can have a challenge. So, so you're putting the completely technology and digital stacks at the bank's end. You are taking care of the risk and compliance. HR, when you're trying to talk about the digital transformation, is very critical that the culture, the digital culture is getting embedded into the organizations. Everybody, not only the technology team or the digital team has to start thinking digitally. Be it on the credit team, operations, compliance, everybody has to start talking about the digital. That's where the transformation start happening. The KPIs, as the DBO is talking about that having a PNL, it means that every uh, the DBO structure has to have their own KPIs to measure the performance of the bank. And that's where the emphasis come on the setting of the KPIs. And definitely the operation has to happen. Now when it comes to the delivery, right? Now you need to, as a part of the digital transfer, how you deliver those banking services to the different customer interaction point, which is now the branches. Earlier you had the channels, but the two critical components get added to the whole of the picture is the DBUs, because now DBU is becoming an extension of your delivery channels for the customers, right? And then fintechs, which works with the partnership with the banks to help them take the banking services, uh, be it in the neo bank form or be it on the, any kind of the partnership that do. But important is the, how the entire the digital st uh, study delivery happened. Like 
is to start with the product management. You need to start thinking each of the product as a digital product. How it can be created digitally, how it can be sold digitally, how it can be serviced digitally, how it can be developed digitally, right? Because it's gone in the days that you can just keep on creating an extension of the product, right? So this uh, product management has become critical. You start looking at the partnership. Cross, based on your strength, whatever strength is there, be it on the asset, be it on the liabilities, you create your partnership, do the partnership, Marketing, now since we are talking about the digital transformation, digital delivery banking services becomes very critical for you to start taking care of the digital marketing kind of structure. And the last, not the best, least, but the acquisitions. Since you have created the digital banking uh, interfaces, how do you acquire those customers digitally? So that's where the emphasis happen. And when it comes to the digital acquisition, it's very important to take care of the fulfillment process. Like customer comes, try to open an account, it should be get open an account, right? It should not happen that customers open the account digitally and then it get logged into somewhere and some operations team has to take care of. So entire the fulfillment process has to take care of it and then build the digital ch uh, channel. So this is the primarily a uh, debut gets fit into your whole scheme of the digital transformation. That's where that entire the things that I just wanted to share with you uh, in considering the time constraint. Uh, I'm uh, closing my the thoughts. If any uh, time we have for questions, otherwise we'll continue. Okay, perfect, fine. Thanks, uh, uh, Nipa. And anyway, I'm gonna be around for the two days. Uh, happy to interact with you in the topics or anything else that you want to talk about the digital transfer. Thank you, Nipa. Thank, Thank you. you. Hope. Yeah.